Welcome to Blindful Chess number 2. In today's video I'm going to play a blindfold chess game, also known as not being able to see the chess pieces. I won't be able to see pawns, queens, knights, rooks, etc. All of those pieces won't be, will, will be invisible. So I will be staring at an empty chessboard and, well, you the viewer will get to see how I visualize that, how I memorize and uh, I try to look at everything in my mind. Okay, we found a game, we're playing with the white pieces. We're going to open up with e4. Uh, Black is going to play c6. Uh, we could play c4, actually. I was looking at this line. This is called... the. Fr it's We transpose into some sort of um, stainer variation of the French defense with e6, but with c6. Um, it's not called a stainer variation, but it's, it's interesting to compare it with it. And I think what I will do is I will take everything on d5. So c takes d5, e, d, uh, c takes d5, e takes d5, and knight c3. Very often in these blindfold games, um, the longer the longer I have to visualize many pieces in my mind, the more likely it's going to be, uh, uh, the more likely it's going to be for me to to lose the game because I have to visualize more pieces. So trading a couple of pawns right away is, I guess, a good sign. Um, I believe this is this is this check with bishop b5 is okay. Trying to deconfigure how black's pieces are set up. I'm gonna play queen b3 now, supporting this d5 pawn. Now after this, I think I can play queen takes b5 check, queen d7, and I think even though I do have isolated pawns, um, I think after knight f3, knight e5 potentially, we have ourselves a decent game. Maybe it's maybe it's not too ambitious to play this as white against against black. But uh, yeah, we, we have an endgame and it's it's easier to visualize. I'm going to play bishop d2. Um, probably black is going to go e6, bishop d6, very natural move. And so far, just just so I can visualize, e4, c6, c4, d5, c6, d5. d6, c4, e6, c6, d5, d5, c6, d5, 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 I'm just visualizing, e4, c6, c4, d5, c6, d5. I take everything on d5, knight f6, knight c3, knight bd7, d4, knight db6, bishop b5. Yeah, maybe I didn't play this incredibly. Knight f3, takes knight e5, king e8, bishop d2, e6. Okay, I have the position in my mind. At least I think so. I have pawns on f2, g2, and h2. Pawn on d4, knight on c3, bishop on d2. Um, My knight on e5, bishop, pawns on b2 and, and a2. No pawn on c2, a rook on a1 that could go to c1. My goodness, okay. Already struggling here. And b5, maybe. Rook c1. I want my rook on the c file in the future, but the question is, am I ready to do that now? Also, another question, do I want to castle or do I want to play something like king e2? My guess is that probably the king on e2 is, is more active, and I'm, I'm not scared of my king being unsafe, because first of all, my king is in a light square, and my opponent has a dark squared bishop, so the bishop is not, never going to attack it. And um, I don't think a knight is going to pose enough trouble. I'm going to play rook ac1 now. My rooks are connected, which means that after something like knight takes d5. Um, after rook takes e1, rook takes e1. Of course, knight takes d5 right now is a big threat. Uh, because after rook takes e1, I would take the other knight with check. And that's why my opponent actually took. And now I have an option I could take with the rook, with the bishop. And actually, I have three options, I should say. I, I could take with the pawn as well. I would like to take with the rook because if not, then my rook gets a little bit passive on c1. Black probably has to take back, and then I'm going to take with the b pawn. And do you remember the isolated pawn I had on d4? Now it's no longer isolated. I have a pawn on c3 defending it. And also, black is underdeveloped. Black still has to move the bishop and the king away, so the final final pieces of black start getting into the game. Um, so I have a king on e2, a knight on e5. I like this. I like this. Uh, I like the way the game has transformed. I'm going to play rook b1 attacking a weak pawn on b7. Uh, probably black is going to play something like b6. And this is more or less what I was aiming for. A little a little bit of a imagine in an endgame like this. That is not super difficult to visualize. Hopefully you at home are maybe pausing the video and trying to listen to me talking talking about the moves. Base b6, a4, bishop c7 is an idea. Yeah, b6 is more or less forced. Let's think about this in an endgame way. So now, 
it's not a tactical it's not a tactical position which means that things will get decided by long long term factors rather than tactics and, and craziness that being said i'd still have some small tactics like 96 attacking on a7 my opponent has pawns on h7 g7 f7 and e6 b6 and a7 i have pawns on a2 c3 d4 f2 g2 h2 is that true I think so maybe this is cheating i should not do this but um yeah i have a knight on e5 my opponent has a bishop on d6 so i could play knight c6 i could play a4 if a4, let's say king e7, knight c6 then works better? Or is it king d7, knight takes a7, rook a8 is there? Yeah, not 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 great. Well, I could play knight b5, rook takes a4, knight takes d6, king takes d6, rook takes b6, check. I'm up a pawn. I think I can push for a win in that endgame. So a4, king e7, knight c6, probably winning. Um, A4, bishop takes e5, maybe worrying. And then, yeah. But then d takes e5. I'm going to go knight c6 directly, because knight takes a7 is a big threat. And let's say black goes king d7, knight takes a7, rook a8, knight b5. Rook takes a2, knight takes d6. King takes d6, rook takes b6, check. King c7. Ah, but do you know what? That's amazing. If you visualize that with me, very slowly. If I go knight c6 right now, king d7, knight takes a7, rook a8, attacking my knight. I move my knight away to b5, that's the only square. Rook takes a2, pinning my bishop right away. So that's already a motive. After that, I can take on d6, king takes d6, and I can't take on b6 check, or I could, but after king c7, both knight e4 and my rook are attacked. So, I'm not, I'm not happy with that. Knight c6, king d7, knight takes a7, that, knight b5. Hmm, interesting. So as a result of that variation, I would like to play a4. And maybe the bishop endgame is... Maybe the bishop endgame is good. Because I was worried about bishop takes e5. Probably that's the best move my opponent has. Knight c6, king d7 is amazing. Now with a4... Oh, there we go. So king e7, this is something we calculated. But now, this is a better version because after knight c6, king d7, knight takes a7, rook a8... If I move my knight away, the black rook ends up being on a4 rather than on a2, and it would have been much better on a2. So this is, unless I'm missing something, maybe black has some sort of uh, other form of compensation rather than, than trying to get the pawn back with rook a8, maybe knight e4 here. But if against knight e4, I can still play something like rook takes b6. And, uh, and now I'm starting to feel even more confident because rook a8 knight b5 so black play sorry sorry black played rook a8 knight, 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 king e7 knight c6 king b7 knight takes e7 rook a8 okay this is according to the plan knight b5 i don't want any unpleasant surprise but as far as i'm concerned uh, we're winning a pawn and we're we're gonna get to push very soon my king is gonna go to d3 pretty automatically the question is, where's Black's counterplay? I have to make sure that everything's under control in that little endgame before before I start making some serious plan, planning and, and stuff like that. So let's take rook takes b6 check, king c7. Okay. Now I would like to put my rook on the second rank because I have many options, right? Rook b1, rook b3, but the way I think... Um, The, the way chess masters usually think, I would like to believe, grandmasters, is uh, by elimination. So rook b2 and rook b1, what's the main difference? They're both very similar, but rook b2 controls the second rank. Rook c4 played by my opponent, giving me king d3 with the tempo. Not sure what this is all about. Uh, I'm happy to get king d3 and c4. And actually, there's a little funny trap. If rook c6, I have flip c4, and if black tries to play rook b6, there's a cheapo. So let's play it quickly, hoping for our opponent to play it quick. This is not a very good example, I apologize. But I do have bishop a5 idea. And that seems to be pr pretty unpleasant. If I play bishop a5 and invade on the 7th rank with my rook, everything starts collapsing for black. 
On top of that, after c4, the d5 square is no longer available for my opponent's knight on f6. Also, bishop f4 is a big threat. Once again, forcing that 7th rank invasion. Ooh, that's a good move. Or is it? 9 g4 attacking on f2. What happens if I play f3? If I play f3, black has knight, take, knight f2 or knight takes h2. If knight f2 check, I can play king e2. And all of a sudden, the knight is trapped, so I win. Um, I could even play king c3, and I think the knight is trapped. And after f3, I also, I think, knight takes h2 loses to bishop f4. Things are looking a little bit grim. I think I could even have played h3, knight takes f2, king e3, but this is a cleaner way. Knight f6 has to be played, and then after bishop f4, everything's looking even worse. Or should I play bishop a5? Okay, I'm going to play f3, knight f6, then, then that's the question. I'm going to play bishop f4, king c8, rook b8, king d7. If king d7 directly, I have rook b7 check first, or directly, I should say. So king d7... Ooh, yeah, yeah. I almost pre moved rook b1. Um, if king d7, pretty much we're going to get to that same position. If king c8 first, rook b8. But king d7, rook b7 eventually will happen. King e8 has to be played because the f7 pawn is weak. And then... How do we continue? Do we go c5? That would give the d5 square to my opponent. So maybe that's not the way. Do we trade the bishop for the knight? That's a very good question, actually. Bishop g5 would force that. And not only trade the bishop for the knight, but also forcing forcing an endgame in which we are... Where's our rook? Forcing a, uh, an endgame in which we're up a pawn and, yeah, we have material. Extra material. But I think it's more likely black will hold the game into a draw if we trade the bishop for the knight. In other words, if we get to a rook endgame, it's more likely for our to our for our, for black to hold the game. I'm gonna play this. Knight d7 had to be played, and I think c5 now trying to cement a knight on, on d6 would be maybe a good idea. And actually, there's a very cool trick. If c5 rook takes c5, looks like I can't take because of knight takes c5, and actually that's true. But after c5. I'm not going to take back after rook takes d5, I'm going to play rook takes d7 check first. Black plays bishop, sorry, um, black plays f6 first, I'm going to cement a bishop on d6. So I have to, I must confess, I'm, I'm, I'm relaxing a little bit. I still have a lot of work to do. There's a, there's a very good line that, that shows how important activity is. After e5, it's important to not go pawn grabbing and, and being obsessed about about material. After e5, I would play king c4 and king d5 or king e4, king d5. Okay. Things are heating up a little bit. I'm gonna play king c4. Trying to bring my king to b5 and, and, and get some sort of c6. And for example, if rook a1, I play c6. Rook c1, king b5, rook b1, bishop b4. And then things are starting to look a little bit Bad for black. Okay, that happened instead. Ooh, if I go to b5, then d4 is hanging. But then I get king c6. Yeah, that must be winning. I sacrifice a pawn for the moment, but after king c6, black, is ha black has to do something about the knight on d7. Let me just visualize this. Knight e5, bishop takes e5, f takes e5, rook takes g7. There's no way that's not winning. And um, we're still up a pawn. Our king is very active. A threat and checkmate here. Rook g8 is checkmate. A checkmate threat. Rook d4, we just take a pawn on e6. And if this, we just push. And if rook takes h2, c7 is winning. So that had to be played. Then rook d7 either way, right? I'll play rook d7, king takes e6. Let's say rook c4, I play c7. 
hopefully you're following the coordinates when you're looking at the board because you you at home have the board there you go you you can see the pieces there we go good game sm7072 so that was a very interesting game so yeah we played this very weird line but hoping for a uh, massive piece trading which worked out we got this end game in which we fixed our structure i think that black shouldn't have allowed that maybe instead of rook c8 bishop b7 or bishop d6 instead um, bishop b7 probably because bishop d6 gets always hit by knight b5 so bishop b7 maybe uh, i was happy to get this transformation and after this we're the only ones pushing for a slight advantage in this end game um knight c6 we did some very good calculation i think king e7 allows us to win a pawn uh after this yeah it was pretty it was pretty straightforward i think this is a very important moment in which we have to not hold on to our material too much but let go for the sake of activity and uh once we got this we we, we threatened checkmate and everything was over okay thank you very much for watching if you have any questions if you have any suggestions if you thought that i missed something if i blundered if i said a line that didn't work please let me know in the comments and as always have a nice day